Go. Oh, I need to turn on the spectral spectrometer. <sighs> well, no, let me. I mean, we're we're recording. I'm in studio mode. Let me see if I can. Yeah, because I was messing. That's what it is. Messing around with uh, the campaign spelunking frame. There you go. Now we got audio. Neat. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now, in the lower left, there's a little sound bar as we talk. That that should be helpful. <laughs> Lol, it's actually only I guess hit to my voice, but that's fine. We're learning. What are we being professional about today? Um. We talked about offers last time. So do we, we just did. spin the wheel and go to marketing? Do we, yeah. do we go to people? We could go backwards. I mean, we could, yeah. uh, honestly, we could just talk about kind of whatever's relevant at this point. Um, Let's go. We can, we can always talk about like what we're up to, what we've learned, kind of, we have to clarify it. That's a great question. What have we learned? There's been a lot of things lately that. Yeah, Why don't I'm, we have this conversation? Like, I don't know. Are we recording right now? Oh yeah. It's been recording again. We got a little Okay, good. Okay. Everybody's gonna comment, and yeah, I know it's it's OBS. It's it's super professional. Neat. <laughs> I mean, there's well, I mean, the, I've been... the logo. Oh, I do need to turn the logo on. Anyway, can. Then... <laughs> I know. Well, that's not pro, right? That's that's what makes the joke funny. I mean, there's there's a lot of things. I mean, I think one of the biggest learnings <laughs> in just trying to write my own content is that nobody has it 100% right. It's just interesting to me, like, how many different ways, you know, like, uh, all your, the master is saying this one is, there's a thousand ways to skin a digital cat, so. Oh, uh, yeah, that upsets people. I, I don't say that so much anymore, but, yeah, you're, well, you're right. There it is. We won't say that. No, but I no, I mean, it's the, the gist of it is okay, there's, the there's, logo. A thousand, Nailed it. there's a thousand ways to do things and, you know, having a logo on our stuff is one of those ways. Um, no, as far as learnings, um, I mean, there's just been, there's just kind of been the, the learning around how this time of year, um, things definitely slow down a little bit. Like this time of year is, is a really good opportunity to, at least for us, they, they slow down just because I think most people are trying to get into their rhythm. Like I think the things that we've been seeing lately from the projects we've been taking on have been um, a lot of automation implementation. Like a lot of people are trying to implement certain automated strategies within their business and um, there's, what I see is that there's not a high need for it right now, just because everybody's trying to tie up loose ends rather than start new projects. I mean, Black Friday is what, in less than a week? <laughs> or actually, in like is a it? week. Um, oh, yeah, man. it's next Friday. <laughs> it's next Friday. And so that's something that I've, I've kind of come to realize is this year we haven't had a lot of, I haven't seen a lot of push for Black Friday stuff. Yeah. Now that you mention it, that's super weird. We're a week out from Black Friday. I mean, I think I remember hearing some rumblings about Amazon Prime Day a while back. But yeah, it doesn't seem like anybody, it's not the early 2010s where it was like, Hashtag Black Friday fights, and you could buy a TV for sixty-two cents if you showed up early enough and you know had trained throughout the year. Um, right, gotten your gotten your martial arts skills up. You're gotten good at grappling and things. And the yeah, um, minor. Well, that's that's something is uh something that I I heard. I I have to go research it a little bit, but um, I've been hearing things about how Black Friday is even looking to be canceled altogether. And that the sales are just going to be offered throughout the month of November and December. Um, basically, after Halloween hits, um, Black Friday is just going to be like a two-month-long thing or a month-and-a-half-long thing. Um, just because, like, one, they're trying to avoid the fights that you had just mentioned. They're trying, like, it's easier to be able to, hey, I ordered something and 
yes, it should be there within seven to 10 business days. Well, if it takes two to three weeks to get instead, it's still no, no skin off people's back because it's still before the holidays. Like they can kind of plan Mm -hmm. a little bit for that. Um, They don't have to have all this money saved up at once to be able to, you know, throw down. They don't have to be there in person, especially with the pandemic. Um, That's a big change that we've seen is a lot of places are trying to figure out how to make, um, I'm going to use the word contactless because even when I go into the grocery store now, how many places I can just tap my debit card. Like that's just, that's just one small piece of the transaction. But if you scale that up to people don't even want to interact with other people anymore because of the risk of spreading things. Um, So it's just, it's really interesting to see how marketing um, has changed because of the shopping habits changing. So that's a, yeah, uh, that's something that I'm seeing as very interesting. Uh, yeah, it's it's super fascinating to talk about how Black Friday has almost kind of disappeared. It used to be a cultural thing. Do you, at least you know, like in the American consumer culture and the holidays, do you know where Black Friday comes from? Are you are you are you a big marketing nerd like me? Well, it's it's that's the it, margins. That's... It's the margins. Yeah. It's trying to get people out of the black and into the green, and so they host all these sales. Um, out or, of the red and into the black. Yeah. But that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah where the business isn't go. losing money, all the losses we took throughout the year, we're going to run so a let's bunch just of try sales. And get into the black. And then like, if you're, if you're fortunate enough, you go into the green with black Friday. Like I've, I've worked my fair share of retail. Um, actually like my first job was working in a pet store for retail. And you wouldn't think that there is a lot of demand for black Friday stuff, but man, people wanted their, I worked in the the pet section um, and I mean, people wanted their fish. They wanted their small animals like early birthday or early Christmas presents. You know, they'd go and stock up on those fish tanks. They'd go and stock up on the the hamster cages. Um, And then after that, for a little bit, I worked at uh, an office supply store and we sold tablets, we sold printers, we sold, you know, so it wasn't just like papers and pens and things like that. We did have some high ticket items that we were, we sold. And I mean, I remember having to come in Thanksgiving night to work that because people would be lining up out the freaking door just to get their office chair, um, just because it was on sale. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar. And at that place I was an assistant manager. So, um, yeah, I had oh, to wow. definitely pay attention to the numbers and, and all that jazz. And it was just, I mean, from an operational perspective, you get really, really good at, uh, resource management when you have a limited <laughs> number of people, a limited amount of energy, um, and a lot of stuff to sell. Like you get really, really good at it. So oh, man. that reminds me of, my my second job ever was at KB Toys, and my first day was Black Friday. Like, I got hired. And it's like, come to, you know, four in the morning, come to the mall, which I literally lived across the street from at the time. So, like, skateboarded at, like, the age of 16. Like, yeah, I'm going to work at KB Toys. Woo! That place never stopped moving the entire day. And this was, like, 20, 2000 one 2002 something like that uh you know when kb toys was was still relevant and yeah my job i stood in a single aisle for an entire day and it was just here's where this toy is at here's where this toy is and it was it was insane uh yeah i worked at uh it's kind of similar to my story i worked a temp you know seasonal temp job at uh at a clothing retail, um, PacSun. And so it's one that's also in the mall. And I think like they had it so that we got hired on. And then after that two week kind of training period, it was black Friday. And Oh, oh my gosh. I wasn't even, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I wasn't even trained on the register at that point. So like all I had been doing up to that point was tagging merchandise and refolding stuff and helping people get stuff down And I remember there was an open register and the line was literally out the door. Like we had people, it was so packed that people weren't even able to do their shopping. They literally had to stand in line and do their shopping from the line. It was a packed sun. It was, it was a packed sun. Yeah. It was a very packed sun. Um, Pack, 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 pack sun. A a pack, pack (laughs) sun with pack, pack man sponsoring pack sun with Mrs. Pac-Man. 
Yes. Sorry. Okay, we could we could go on that for hours, but um, but yeah. So I remember like hopping on the register, and I didn't. I you know I've worked registers before because I was also working. That was my second job at the time. I was holding two jobs. And so the other one was at the pet store. And so I'd worked registers before and I was like, eh, it's a, it's a POS system. Like, and no, like not a, not a piece of crap system. It's like literally called a, like a you know, point, point of sale, sale. Yeah, yeah. the point of sale. Yeah. So I was like, eh, it's a point of sale system. Like it, you're going to be able to figure it out. No big deal. And so I go and I'm like stumbling through it, figuring it out though. And I remember I got kicked off the register because I didn't fold a lady's shirt properly or like a dress or something. Like she got mad because she said, I just took it and crumpled it up and threw it in the bag. And I was like, I'm not really sure what you want me to do here. And she's like, I want you to get the folding board out and fold it nice and neat for me since you decided to destroy it. And I'm like, lady, you brought it up here. Like you had tried it on in the fitting room. And so it was already unfolded. Anyways, I got kicked off the register because of that. Um, and so that's why I learned that people get like a little weird buying clothes off the rack. Like, like I, I can completely understand like not wanting it wrinkled, especially if it's going to be a gift for somebody or something like that, but like it's in your shopping bag. So anywho, I, uh, yeah, that's when I learned I, I don't ever want to work the register during black Friday at a clothing store. I would much rather work the register at the pet store or at, you know, a place where like things come in boxes and I don't have to, to worry about it. Um, that would be great if there is a place selling business kits and you could just buy a box of business stuff. That'd be pretty pro, I'll, right? Yeah. 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 I, I think what Paul is hinting at is the, uh, business kits that, that we are creating and, uh, yeah, it's it's well with those it's fun. You, they don't even come in a box, at least not yet. Not like, yet, they will. It's yeah, a giant Lego uh, kit. Yeah, except those come in a box with plastic bags within a box. So I don't I don't know how that'll work. But it would be a binder in a plastic bag, and inside that binder are like the handouts in plastic bags in the binder. And we should just make people buy a Lego set and they have to build like a Lego person or something. I don't know. Nope. Nope. Don't even run with that idea. We're not going down that rail. <laughs> I've already heard the starter pistol. Damn it. My legs are sore. I need to, I need to stop giving you ideas. That's okay. Cause... Well, the, the people systems kit though, uh, it's been giving some people ideas. People have been liking well, that. Yeah, I I think uh so where it where it stems from is um you know we had we had that experience uh I'm not going to I'm not going to name names I'm pretty sure there's people out there who can figure it out but we had an experience with uh an agency owner um that we were hired on to work with them and there was a bunch of promises um that were made and just weren't fulfilled upon on, on that person's end. And so long story short, we ended up getting fired falsely. Like um, it, it was determined it was a wrongful termination um, with the federal organization that runs it, which is the National Labor Relations Board. Um, and uh, yeah, basically through that, what came out of it is, is Paul and I had sat down and we realized that um, his consulting agency, PLS Consulting, which I was helping run, I was kind of a co, I wasn't a co-founder of it, but I was like the co, uh, like operations manager. Basically. You were the other person. Yes. <laughs> if I mean, it was like a food truck, there is, it was like PLS Consulting. And then like, Brita is there being awesome. And that's yeah, we had like it all Paul running it. We had like Paul running it in the in the face of everything, and then me on the the back end. And after we got done with uh, this kind of shady organization in that crap situation, um, we sat down and we we're just like, "Listen, what's been currently working for us with PLS Consulting is great. Like it's it's definitely keeping the lights on and everything, um, but we want something more." And so we had started looking at like, "Well, what do we have? We both have a lot of experience with that we would want to." um, showcase and really put out there. And that's where we had started. I mean, we started looking at some of the, the businesses that we really liked. And, um, I mean, we looked at people from, from keep to digital marketer to, 
I mean, man, I can't remember, just other agencies that we had been doing business with. And like the one thing that kept consistently coming back was selling these kind of like business in a box, like just a kit for common problems. And the one common problem that we had been running into at that point um, when we had this whole court case was just the the issue with people systems like that wasn't the first time that we had been hired on into a situation to grow and scale the company and every single time that we were asked to grow and scale the company it always came down to a people systems issue it was never the fact that like it was never the fact of customer retention because when when you kept when we kept digging into okay well why why are we having issues with customer retention it would come back to their like it would literally come back to the people the either they weren't competent to do the job like they just didn't have the skill set or there wasn't the systems and processes in place to be able to effectively fulfill on the promises that were that were being sold so um, that's that's kind of where the first people systems or it's the people systems business kit came into play, um, which is is currently in development. And I want to say we're we're fairly close to it. But Don't yeah, be that humble. Came... you've been researching this for years. I mean, I've been researching it too, but it's been one Cut. week since you looked at me. <laughs> Any chance I get, I'm going to take that. <laughs> uh, yep. There you Name go. Name the 90s song. Um, uh, the, uh, Bare Naked Ladies. I think uh, that is. I think that's Bare Naked Ladies. I think it's literally called One Week. Uh, yeah, I think it's called One um, Week. So 168 hours. There it's you go. It's been 168 hours since the whole It doesn't have the same ring to it. It okay. doesn't have the same ring to it. We can um, make it work. Um but yeah, we've been working on this for years and it, it came down to figuring out these five parts of what are people systems, these these components. Because you, know, you hear about the components of, you know, like marketing, like the four Ps where it's like product and price and polyps and Polynesian sauce, something like that. Um, and Which then, I hear is, is great over rice, but... Ooh, that would be good. But um, with peoples, it's the same thing. And, and that's it's it's really interesting how it's almost been dehumanized in the past couple decades to to HR, like literally human resources. That's kind of like there's a people under that human. And so even just looking at it from the people systems compared to human resources changes it up because when you realize it's a journey – just like marketing sales and fulfillment of a thing you sell behind the scenes, there's kind of that same journey for employees where there's that there's the hiring and then the onboarding of it. And then now they're on the bus and they're doing their thing. And at some point in most cases, there's usually an offboarding and that's part of the journey too. And so I'm very pleased to see that a lot of these giant enterprise and corporate businesses, especially softwares, are starting to look at that part, which as small businesses, we've known that forever. And so that's why I'm excited about this people systems kit, because it's it's like a fast track to making sure that you, again, you can, you can, you're basically, we're building that employee journey of, you know, hiring, the, uh, the, onboarding. As I like to call it, the internal customer, like somebody else has probably customer. coined that, but I, I really like it. to refer to it as the internal customers because so many times um, I'm so one of the most um, influential uh, pieces that I got from working at at Keep, it was then Infusionsoft, was when um, I first got hired on, I think it was actually Scott Martineau that used to be the big proponent of this, was um, the whole thing was was happy employees equal happy customers equal happy shareholders. And I'm kind of stopping at the shareholders piece because I think a lot of um, the people that we serve and at least like I know in our realm, there's not really a lot of shareholders that they have to deal with. But it still rings true that happy employees equal happy customers. Like um, one of my favorite coffee, I mean, my favorite coffee shops to go to is there is one specific Starbucks location that I will go to because I enjoy the atmosphere that the employees generate. Um, 
any other Starbucks that I've ever gone to, I don't really care because it's just kind of like, all right, it's another chain, whatever. Um, there's even a small chain, uh, the coffee shop out here called Hava Java that I like to go to because it's a really nice place to sit and work. The location's awesome, but it's not somewhere where I immediately think of because again, just the employees have never given me that really good vibe. Um, so the, actually, so there's three. So the one Starbucks location that I like going to, there is one, um, coffee shop called the human bean, uh, which is, super awesome branding first off (laughs) first off the branding itself is amazing um but then every single time that i show up those i don't know if you want to call them baristas or just the the women making my coffee are phenomenal i have never gotten one that's like how can i help you so i was just like hey how are you doing today and like i can have a conversation i usually have like a little 30 second conversation with them even before i place my order and they never make me feel rushed they are genuinely happy to be there and like you can tell like and you know what even if they're not happy to be there they never let me know that they always make sure that it's the interaction with me and they just seem like they're very they're just awesome happy people um and then uh, the other place, which Paul, I think you'll you'll probably agree with, is Coffee Rush. There's a Coffee there's Rush. a yeah, it's a small chain. I think it's local here to in Arizona. There's only um, like they have, two or three, right? There's a there's like three or four locations. Yeah, it's amazing. There's like three go or, to Coffee Rush in the Valley. Yeah, if you're ever out here in Arizona in the Valley, go to Coffee Rush because it's I want to say it's owned by like three brothers or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, and the last time I super friendly. yeah. Oh yeah. Then that's, that's the big thing is like their employees, they, they hire genuinely happy people. And so their employees are happy. Um, which therefore, like I have never really had a bad experience at coffee rush. Like usually when they're making my stuff, the one thing I really like is, you know, they'll be holding the conversation with the person that's waiting on their stuff, but then they usually have two people working at all times. So that way, like you have one person that's helping customer A, and then you have the other person who is acknowledging customer B and starting to get their order ready. And so it's, it's just, it's such an awesome dynamic and beautiful. It's operationally beautiful. And, and again, I think it all comes down for me. It's all about the employee is like, you have to have people in there that genuinely want to be there and, and have a positive attitude. And a lot of that stems just from having the operational excellence, um, in your own processes and systems. Um, and that's something that I really, really enjoy about each of the locations that I just shared. And, um, yeah. And so that's something that I think we're really going for is, is with this people systems kit is figuring out what are those things? What are those things that are going to make people happy and want to be there and excited to be there? And, um, for those of you who haven't heard, I recently got, I recently became a keep certified partner and which um, I've been, this has been a long time coming. I left keep in 2017. And so it's been, um, and I mean, I started there in 2014. So it's been close to nine years. I think January is going to be the nine years since I've been working yeah. with the keep software. Nice. Um, Cause I started January, 2014. So but what um, UI do that, you remember? Was that the the old gray one? Do you remember that? Or no. was it the neon green? Because I think the neon green came about when you guys switched locations. It was right around that time. But 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 so, you never knew the gray UI. It was no with the um, long settings menu that just dropped down to the bottom of the screen. Honestly, I can't remember. I I so derailed yeah that's okay i because i started like the campaign builder had just become a thing oh yeah that was and when that the green had happened yeah okay and then they went to like the dark blue and then and then i was watching a monkey pod thing the other day from 2017 and it was the gray one where they had the gray ui nav and then now the modern one anyway we're nerds yeah anyways the whole point of that is i just got certified and one of the biggest things with my certification is um 
so for anybody watching this that doesn't know, uh, part of the certification is you have to be able to show that you understand strategy and have the ability to be able to implement it into the software, um, which is super, super fun and fascinating. And as somebody who started out in the tech support world, that was a little difficult for me. Um, before I had left, I had actually tried getting a spot as a partner manager. And one of the reasons why I failed that interview is because I didn't have the strategy. Um, I just was not skilled at it because everything had come from, it's a very weird transition to go from just knowing the software, but then it's a completely other thing to knowing the strategy and how to implement it into the software. So it took me, it took me these last five years or so to be able to kind of get my skills up to the point that I felt comfortable um, really taking on that challenge. And the one thing that I, I wanted to do something different. And the one thing I saw is keep is known as a sales and marketing software. Um, but there's so many other the, uh, possibilities that you can use it for. And so mine, because of the people systems kit and, uh, Oh, I like that hat. Um, but because of the people systems kit and uh, what I had been researching and the research I've been doing to put into it, I decided to go with hiring and onboarding automation um, because typically you have to get um, what's called an applicant tracking system or an ATS, which is an entire, and basically it's the same thing as a CRM, but it's an entirely different kind of software that most recruiters, staffing agencies, and honestly, a lot of these HR departments end up going with and getting um, just in order to track applicants and how that process looks. And so I was like, you know what, let's see if we can do it with Keep. And I think for the version one that I built out of both of them, it is pretty awesome. Like I definitely got a majority of the 80, per like I got 80% of it. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. I've and, seen them. And I'm, they're good, they're good <laughs> campaigns. I mean, they got you certified, but I also, I mean, for those for those watching at home or on your phone, I intentionally didn't look at any of this until she's like, the campaigns are ready. So like, it yeah. was a total surprise. Like, I mean, she talked about it a little bit, you know, we wrapped on strategy, but I intentionally didn't look at it and like. And it was maybe it's... a thing or two here or there with like, I think I was running into something where I was trying to figure out, I had to use Zapier at some point um, in order because there's like a, you know, scheduling uh, thing. manager and then the, person running the yeah, yeah. So, anyway so it was stuff. like small technicalities but one thing um one thing that I will share is like I usually when people think of Brina the word association that goes with it is Paul Sokol and so I wanted to make sure that these campaigns were mine that I built them like I strategized them I built them I implemented them um and I showcased them and you and got so, certified off of them I did. I did. And that was something that even in the certification, it was, it was called out that it's really cool to see that you did a hiring journey um, because most people don't really do that. And so, yeah. So when Paul mentions that, you know, I, I kept this very sealed up and I was very tight lipped about it. Um, but it all came down to what we're learning about people systems. Like the pandemic has changed so much regarding, regarding just that how people want to work. And, um, you know, there's this, there's this new term that has probably in the past year or so that's really been, uh, brought to light of ghosting, which is where, I mean, you have somebody that you're interacting with and then all of a sudden they go MIA and they're just, they're just gone and you don't, yeah, they just turn into a ghost and you don't see them anymore. Um, and so that was something that with these hiring and onboarding journeys, I was, that's probably the number one complaint that I'm hearing is that people are people are ghosting and so i was trying to solve for that problem of how do you keep people engaged throughout the hiring and onboarding process um and so with the people systems kit that's just kind of a a brief touch on some of the things we're going to be doing but there's also other things of reporting and i know paul when you and i were at infusionsoft um, they had the big three reporting which is something that we still do i i will say i'm not the best at it but um and I'm not we have the best our... at enforcing it, so I can, I can be a better leader. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Hey, we're, it's honestly, I look at it as a trial run right now where we're trying to get that hey, stuff left. It's at out. least reminding us every week that, like, hey, tell us something. <laughs> yeah. Tell us you did something. Let's what, do something. Sense? It's like that meme with the, the stick figure. <laughs> do something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but <sighs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that of, uh, you don't, it's, it's really interesting to me how, because I would say that the big three is a cross between that managerial and HR role. Like when you actually look at it from a functional standpoint, who should actually own that HR or the managers? Because at least when we were at Infusionsoft, the big three was something that could be pulled in that HR could use if you were getting written up or if you were getting terminated. Um, that was something that was heavily relied upon was like those performance standings and your one-on-one standings and things like that. So it's the overlap like that of trying to clearly define those kind of functions and roles and responsibilities and who should be doing them that I think we're trying to solve for with this, this people systems kit. And making it fair as well, not setting it up to where somebody can just be showing up and their leader can be there and it seems like things are going good if you're to look at it though there's you know efficiencies and things that that could be that can be improved and it's really interesting you're like you know who who owns you know the 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 big three or each of the three objectives or the three kpis whatever the things are is it the people organization or is it the leader of that role and I almost think it's kind of like two sides of the same coin, how we were talking the other day about measuring like a contractor's performance of it's like, well, you know, what's it was like, what's the time between being like build this and it comes back. But that's one data point. Then there is that other about the quality and like the accuracy. And so it's almost like the I guess the I guess it's a super collaborative thing where if the role of the people systems is to make sure that uh, if you almost think about it like a, like an airplane or cruise ship where there's all these gauges and things and the people systems is just like paying attention to all those and then interfacing with the different parts that are controlling those different gauges. And then that's where the leadership comes in. If it's like, Oh, oil pressure is low. Okay. Well, let's go talk to the guy who deals with oil pressure And then they're the person that can say, this is what's going on. Yeah. I mean, when you, especially with an organization like ours, like we have two people and, you know, some contractors here and there that come in. Um, So it's not really the complexity behind running that machine isn't, it's not super complex. It's still really complex though. (laughs) Even with two people, like I'm regularly surprised at how complex it is. And maybe I'm not saying, so I'm not diminishing the complexity. I'm just saying it's kind of like, um, uh, what are those, uh, the, the bird things that dip their, the, the drinking birds that. Yeah. So like just, the complexity behind the technology to get the motion, it's not super complex. It just relies on a few different things of gravity. Uh, Okay. Gravity in and of itself, if you want to break it down, gravity is super complex. Like it's, it's complex, but just a weak force. (laughs) That joke was weak. Um, But (laughs) what I'm, (laughs) so what I'm getting at though, is, is just the mechanism of, the motion of what makes that motion, it's not super complex. You That's have, true. you have like, you know, you have to weight it in a certain way and that's about it. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's not super complex, but when you start getting to a point of like the, um, like a hydroelectric system, there's a lot more complexity to something like that where you have to have motion, the water, like, it's you know, way more precise. There you go. There's a lot more moving parts. Yeah. Yes. And so, and so that's what I'm saying is like, we have, I mean, even when, so we have worked at, I mean, obviously both of us worked at, at Infusionsoft, um, now Keep, Keep formally, Keep the artist formerly known as Infusionsoft. It's just a symbol um, now. It is. Just... <laughs> it is. It's, it's just the, the symbol. I can't even call that a K because there's some kind of arrow in it too, but, um, but it's the like whole the FedEx measuring spoon. Don't tell people. Yeah. He, oh yeah. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knows about the measuring spoon. I just recently found out about that. But, uh, 
but the whole thing is, is like, we've worked at those larger companies. And even then, like, I don't even think Infusionsoft was considered an enterprise company when we worked there because they weren't even public at that time. I don't know if they are public yet. Well, either, what makes, is it the size that makes something enterprise or is it the whole stockholder thing? I mean, because mm. there is, I mean, there's seven, 800 people when we were working there. Like that's. And yeah, tiny. they, they that, did reach. They did reach like ten thousand customers while we, we were both still there. I think. I know, like a decade ago. That was there. a long time ago. So I mean, it's got to be enterprise level. They're not. I mean, they're playing at a much different level. I mean, our, could our people systems kit work for that? Sure, but they're going to already have all of the things. The majority of the things. But but what I'm saying though is like the complexity though. We we you and I together have seen the complexity at large organizations like that, like almost enterprise level, like quite honestly, I mean, I've worked at ZipRecruiter as well, which That's was very similar. Like, yeah. And that was very similarly ran to how Infusionsoft was. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that like we both worked at kind of that enterprise level. And we've had and friends at GoDaddy and PayPal, which it's the similar kind of rumblings. Yeah. Um, but the whole point is like, we worked from there to that kind of like, medium size to our own small business. So we have worked across the entire scale. And I, for me, the one thing that I have, it's just, it's so fascinating to me how the, it's always the people systems, like majority of the problems that I've seen within companies has always come back to the people systems. It's always the leaders. It's always the people. Yeah. It's always the people. It's so crazy. But it's, it's not, but not just the people, because there's two parts to people systems. You have people and you have the systems. Uh, correct. Is what I'm yes. getting at. Yeah. And so like, yes, like yeah. a majority of the time, a majority of the time people want to pinpoint it on, oh, it's that person's personality. Like I know plenty of people who I think they're rock stars, but they've been known as combative or whatever in their role. And I'm like, yeah, Paul, you're, you're one of them. Shoot. I was one of them there towards the end. Like, it's, but it's something of there's like the independent thinkers. And like, I, I don't think that when you have good systems in place, it gives space for those independent thinkers to continue to be independent because that's like, like, I think we've talked about this before. Like there's some people in the roles that they just want to soldier, which is perfectly fine. Because like, when you look at an ant colony, you have different, and like, I love nature and biology. So I'm not trying to diminish workers in any regards but with ant colonies bee colonies like those hive mind colonies they are so efficient they are so freaking efficient because everybody has a job and everybody knows their role and everybody knows their place and they do that job without any complaints and like there are some people that just want to come in and grab a paycheck and you know what be fine with that they're never going to want to advance. They want to soldier along. They want to be at that role and that level. Don't make them feel bad because they want to come in and just do their job. Yet there are other people that want to advance, that want to work their way up. Well, then guess what? You put them on a different career path than those other people that just want to come in. And that's a really wise distinction because when you're looking to like grow the team and grow the business, you kind of need to figure out, oh, am I hiring for that? Like, is it, if I was to open a, a restaurant or something like that, like the 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 server, bartender, waitress type, like that that role, people can soldier there, and that's okay. And if they want to be a bartender for thirty years, great, because like we need bartenders. Um, but well, what if, if somebody wants to be a bar manager or like or the restaurant chef. manager? Exactly, different kind of conversation. When you're hiring and growing your team, it's important to know what kind of role are you looking for? Cause some roles you don't want anyone that's going to soldier. You wanted to push ahead real hard. And then for some roles you kind of need them to soldier because that's just, it's, it's the, the function, it's the workhorse. It's the people making sandwiches at all the sandwich shops. Now, you just need people to make them. Let me ask you this. Is that really something, is that a distinction that you need to make at the role level though? Or is that something that you make at the, at the distinction of like the person or, is it something that you're like, hey, we have, I mean, especially like going back to the temp seasonal work that I did, those people, cool. Like, I don't care if I hire people that want to come in and soldier. However, mm -hmm. they had 
they had they understood that um when i with pack sun that they had like three positions full-time positions that they wanted to hire for and they actually offered me a full-time job um when i after the the season was over because i did do such a good job that they wanted to keep me on um so but so that's something is like you kind of hire like so i guess let me let me ask that is like at what what level do you make that distinction it's probably well leadership wise it's probably just a good mindset thing to be aware of and then depending on the scale and what you're looking to hire for i would kind of let it guide that so if it's like i i need people to work the registers and push carts um maybe there's an opportunity for them to move up because there's going to need to be management leadership positions great and then if you're looking at oh we want to build out a marketing team you may want to intentionally say we don't want the soldier types until maybe we've got like three creative directors going that are just regularly pushing stuff out and then okay we can start to hire that kind of grunt person because the process has been figured out to the point you know we're, we're paying someone eight hours a day to just like slice meat because that's what we feel like doing and we can do it and that can be grunty we'll make their life as happy as possible um and they're gonna slice meat. You're 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 bringing me back to my my deli days. I know. I also might be <laughs> I might be hungry too. We've also been going at this for forty minutes. It's pretty rad. Hopefully, everybody is hitting. They're smashing the like button. They're commenting. They're smash that like button and subscribe. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not doing the YouTube stuff. Um, no, I mean that it, it really that is something that's a huge distinction that I think within people systems too, that you know I might even try and solve for it right now is like you know, going forward with this people systems kit is creating yes it's a little additional work but creating two different pathways so you have the people that you're hiring on that you know I mean that's a that's something you can ask them in the interview process is like hey how far do you see yourself going in this company and if they're like listen I just want to do this job to get myself through school. Cool. Guess what? We're putting you in that like tier one, mm -hmm. like no, maybe the non-advancement level where we know that you're just going to be the, the cashier. You're just going to be the customer service person. Mm -hmm. You're just going to be this like you're gonna, ground level tier yeah, one person. There's a specific contribution you're going to make and we're grateful for you and we're going to pay yep. you and you're keeping the wheels and wheels turning in this thing. And we're very, very grateful for that. Go get but then degree. there's the other people. Yeah. Go get your degree because that was something huge at Infusionsoft. As I remember there that, that has really stuck with me is that they were okay with people leaving. They wanted to see people. They were a leadership factory and they wanted to see people. And I mean, I can name off so many of the employees that have gone on to do great things almost Just every from, single one like it's you know from from that period at least you know greg know, like jenkins the, is the the biggest name that i can think of, of right off the course. he's he's, he's the, like the epitome of the i know he's, he's the og he's, you know he's yeah. the original <laughs> monkey pot of the original greg oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> um the the outstanding greg um <laughs> Uh, I'm sure he'll he'll appreciate all of our corny jokes here. <laughs> Absolutely. So. But no, for real. I mean, I I remember when I started, Greg was running the um what's oh, the, shoot. the edge of Fusion Soft University. There right? you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was amazing at it. He was absolutely amazing. And then when he left, like he he started what has now turned into, I mean, anytime that I hear somebody saying like, listen, I just need to know the bare bones, how to make this, how to make keep work. How do I do this? It's always monkey pod. And him and his Grovers are just such amazing people and they have done such amazing things. And, um, and yeah, like quite, quite honestly, he is, he is the number one success story that I share when I say that when you hire people, support them in their dreams. Like if they want to be a lifer with your company, let's support that. Let's give them that career path. Let's plan that out with them. Let's see how that looks and put them in the opportunities. Even if they start out in customer support, but they want to be over in product, 
Let's figure out how to make that happen. Let's see what that career path looks like for you. How can we get you time with those product people to where you're learning what those processes look like and how can you contribute to that? And then again, if they just want to learn what they learned there, get the, like with us, we got a free, there was plenty of people that got hired on just because they wanted the free app because they wanted to go start their own thing. And you know what? No shame to that. Like that was something Infusionsoft was always like, yeah, if you just got hired on for the free app, cool. Proof of concept, give us a case study. Like they worked with people and it was, it was incredible. And I thought that was one of the coolest things because like, honestly, the loyalty, the loyalty that was bred from that was just outstanding. And um, that is something that I'm really looking to bring into the people system stuff that we're building is just because like, that's something that I feel is missing from a lot of businesses nowadays is being able to really have, have it be a win-win for both the employee and the business. And the consumers. And, and, win, well, and win, the consumers. Win. You're going to hypercube it. Paul, but, that's why you're here is because you're, you're the focus on the consumer. You're the, you're the focus on the external customer journey. I really, really heavily focus on that internal customer oh, yeah, journey because I know, absolutely. I know at the end of the day, it's going to get done. The external people are going to buy, people are going to have their stuff fulfilled. But to me, the bigger problem and the bigger challenge and something that I am super passionate about is that internal customer journey. And I think that's why we balance each other out really well is because I have a tendency to be too much of an advocate for the, the employee and you're just like, but the customer, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're paying us. Yes, yes. I get it. And, that, and that's why the People <laughs> Systems Kit's been so exciting to design because we're really working to duplicate oneself and, and figuring out all those key important things and making it so somebody can join the team uh, and feel comfortable and confident in what they're supposed to do and knowing that they're being supported. Uh, and then as the, the, the business having clarity and insight into is this person working out you know is it are they doing what we need them to do so yeah in an objective way because there's yes in an objective way yes <laughs> not because a subjective it's, way no feelings like, let's, are not a way to manage uh, oh okay uh, balance. Right. It's, balance it's a balance it's a balance it's, wise it's a balance, but I mean, you need to have, objective. well, cause if I'm feeling like I'm doing a good job, but you know, it's saying like, Hey, you're dropping the ball on every project you're working on. Then yeah. Like I'm not doing a good job. Then am I? Well, sure. So, or if someone's crushing their metrics, but everybody's like, this guy smells like microwave tuna casserole. Like, you know, Hey, Hey, I was that person. Okay. But it wasn't really the... <laughs> I didn't smell like microwave tuna casserole, but it was, it was my, <laughs> no, but my, my attitude smelled like, like the tuna casserole. Like seriously, like I, because when I worked That's in the book, complaints, tuna noodle casserole attitude <laughs> from the microwave. Yes. Yes. It makes no sense and everybody's going to buy it, but for real, like it's something that if you were just crushing your metrics, but you're just very hard to work with. Because that's something that I do is I bulldoze people. I'm like, listen, I know what the outcome needs to be. I know how to get there. Get out of my way so I can do it. And that is not a very, um, it's not a team player attitude. And when you're working on a team, you have to have, like, that's just a and necessity. I'll take accountability so, that I'm like that. And you've probably learned a little bit of that for me. Not to say that uh, you're not oh, a very so it's strong. learned behavior. A little bit, or maybe just yeah. I encourage yeah. it. I encourage you to know what Hey, you I know. don't need any more excuses for my bad behavior, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. But, but for real, like, so that's that's what we're trying to bring into place is, is making sure that people can, like, if they feel like they're doing a good job, let's give them those actual uh, based in reality numbers to show them that they're doing a good job mm -hmm. too. Um, and it's not just from, Again, it's not just from the the numbers, metrics. Hey, are you doing your work? Um, it's how are you contributing um, from a, a personality standpoint to to the team? Like, are you uplifting people? Are you are you um, are you making people feel good? Because, like, I I again, I know that I wasn't uh, a great person to be around. Like, I probably made the job not so much fun to come into work every day. And which therefore, if you look at it, probably had an impact on certain metrics that I was supposed to be hitting. So 
Um, so it's just, that's all kind of the stuff that we're looking to solve for with this people systems kit though. And I'm really excited because I feel like this is a, it's uncharted territory. Not a lot of people have put focus on it and, Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be really interesting to see just where this goes and, and what it impacts. So I'm excited. I'm very excited. Me too. Especially that one page that, uh, that five, that five phase pdf that i was showing you the other day so oh geez because you've made it this far you should request this pdf and we'll send it to you whatever makes the most sense reach out and uh and we'll let you know uh and i think we should probably round it out because again this is about 50 minutes this is this is an, an entire television show if we include the commercial breaks so like you know, we could make sponsors. it another 30 and just make a whole length movie out of it. I don't feel I have enough conflict to make act two believable, nor build a <laughs> you really know, I'm strong really su- act three. I will say I am surprised there hasn't been a, 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 an appearance from a cat at this point. I mean, Call Remy. He'll show up. Here, we'll be both. She's, she's on the show. Oh, she kicked you out. No, no, that's her chair. That's the that's, that's Katie's chair. I'm in my chair. Oh, you let her. Where's Remy, though? He, his little butt is usually kind of crawling know, around he's, here. He's probably taking a nap in the closet or something. But yes, his his butt usually... You can call him. All you have to do is call him. Just call you his just name. You have to believe. Remy, Remy, Remy. Remy, 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 Remy. You gotta be <laughs> grateful. And it's a manifestation exercise. There's a kitty. <laughs> okay, it doesn't work You can like usually that. hear him... Uh, you can usually hear him calling before or doing his little meow. Yes. Running up and then you see his tail. And yes, and then he gives you a full butt shot on the webcam and you're like, no, Remy, this. <sighs> yeah, we have to blur that out. Mm-hmm. So I think this has been a fun being pro and I'm excited to see what everybody's thinking that's watching. So yes. have a good day All and right. a good Thanksgiving. Yep, and uh, we'll see you next week. All righty. Bye. Bye.